Thanks for staying on and welcome back. Senior Minister Yao Safo Mafo is insisting that over $15 billion financial assistance extended to Ghana by the Chinese government is the best deal to support government's industrialization drive. He re-emphasized the deal is a new concessional model being adopted by government to replace the traditional ways of sourcing for funds for state projects. There's more in this report. According to Yao Osafu Mafo, currently Ghana does not have the capacity to borrow, especially under some of the conditions given under the International Monetary Fund bailout agreement. This, he noted, required other innovative means of raising funds for the country. Government in the past months has come under several criticisms over the Chinese deal with the minority side, describing it as a loan. If we can convert 10 billion in some type of exchange, to exploit the 460 billion, what is wrong with it? It will give us a very integrated alumina, aluminum, aluminum ingot, aluminum complex, one of the latest in the world, and create thousands of employment and change the industrial landscape of Ghana. And therefore, we are going to do exactly that. We won't borrow, we'll find a way of finding resources to develop it by exchanging part of those things down there for development. Yeah, Osaf Mahfou was speaking at the launch of a book authored by Dr. Ishmo Yamsin titled Africa in Search of Prosperity. The book covers economic development, business, finance, and economic growth. On his path, Vice President Dr. Mahmoud Baumia reiterated government's commitment to cap the debt to GDP ratio at 5% annually. According to him, plans are underway to present the relevant laws to Parliament as part of initiatives to deal with the country's rising debts. This issue of reversibility, we have to redress, address it. Uh, uh, there is dance of one step forward, two steps backwards. Um, as a country, we have to address it. And so we are going to propose a law this year, in the next few months, and pass it course before the budget, that we cap the deficit by law to no more than 5% of GDP in any year. <laughs> and this is not because somebody says you should do it. No, nobody has said you should do it. But it's because it's the right thing to do. It is the right thing to do for our country and for the future of our country. Meanwhile, Dr. Eshmo Yamsin told Joy Business the challenges faced by managers of the economy in the last few years inspired the book. I have been uh, in the corporate for, for about 15 years. During those years, I've actually had something to do with government. Not as a politician, but as a private sector person helping to, to, to develop this country and have seen Ghana take one step forward and three steps backwards. As the Vice President said, the reversibility uh, uh, syndrome. And it has worried me for many years. The book was edited by Ivo Ajimandria and Bill Popolampo. Now, Ghana is to develop a publicly available petroleum register containing full text of all petroleum agreements, licenses, permits, and authorizations by the end of 2017. That's according to the Deputy Minister of Energy in charge of petroleum, Dr. Mohamed Amin Adam, at the ongoing Africa, Data, Africa Open Data Conference in Accra. The move is to provide clarity on the Petroleum Exploration and Production Act 2016, which mandates a register be kept and be made accessible to all. Mr. Amin Adam is convinced this will strengthen the fight for an effective beneficial ownership in the aid to in the bid to address corruption in the sector. Now we have taken a decision that the petroleum register, which is required to be set up under section 56 of the law of Act 919, should be established where all the contracts will be published there. Dr. Amin Adam also revealed value for money audit at the procurement division to deepen contract transparency in the sector. So we have soon resolved that. Apart from providing this information, 
we must have a portal within the register where the primary contracts can be downloaded by citizens wherever you find yourself. You know, so that is the understanding we have reached at the moment. There is an additional portal they are doing, uh, which is uh, through their relationship with the EITR, and that is the repository, the data repository, similar to what we have in the mining you know, sector, where data on production, well information, um, uh, pricing, uh, lifting, uh, production, and even the expenditure of the revenue that is generated from, from the exploitation of oil. So we are going to have two portals going side by side so that people should be able to link what they see in the contracts when disclosed on the register with the data that is published on the data repository to be able to reconcile whether we are disclosing the real amount of revenue uh, due the state, whether the, the state share of oil corresponds with what is negotiated in the contract. Meanwhile, there are concerns about clarity of some aspects of the Petroleum Exploration and Production Law. Co-chair of the Ghana Extractive Industry Transparency, Transparency Initiative, EITI, Dr. Steve Mantiao, um, believes this could be corruption in the industry if not checked. Also, the government has announced the establishment of value for money units within the Public Procurement Authority. Because it is important for us to recognize that disclosure of information itself does not necessarily lead to value for money in public contracts. Because it is taken for granted that when contracts are disclosed, citizens will ask questions about the cost of the projects, about the process, the efficiency of the processes used in the procurement, and the outputs to be derived from the contract. Unfortunately, Ghanaian citizens do not usually concern themselves about this. All right, so that was still the Deputy Minister of uh, Petroleum, Dr. Mohamed Amin Adam. Now, still staying within the energy sector, government says it has taken some measures that would result in a significant reduction in utility tariffs before the end of the year. These initiatives include moving away from crude oil to gas to power generation, as well as renegotiating the cost of gas purchased from the country's oil fields and from Nigeria, Boache Jakun is the energy minister. Remember that it is not the government that sets the tariffs, it's PURC. So we have to take our levies out to allow PURC to reduce the tariffs. It was a marginal step, but we intend to do even more. The first thing we have to look at is looking at the tariff structure itself. Right now, we have a very convoluted tariff structure where the lifeline, then there is 51 to 300, you pay one step, uh, 301 to 600, you pay another, and then above 600, you pay a different rate. We think that it's, it's convoluted for a number of reasons. One is that in our country, a lot of people live in what you call compound houses, and they share one meter. So all the poor folk who live in a compound house of, say, 10 or 12 families, sharing one meter will automatically put them collectively in the highest, above the, the, the in the higher tariff bracket, which is not reflective of what they are consuming as individual families. So what we are now looking to do is to flatten the tariff so that you have the lifeline and after the lifeline, it is a flat rate for whatever you consume. That will work for the compound houses, that will work for industry. And it will have the effect of removing the punitive steps built into the tariff structure. Away from energy, ahead of the announcement of a new policy rate by the Monetary Policy Committee of the Central Bank next week, some industry stakeholders, including the Ghana Investment Promotion Center, GIPC, are hopeful of a downward review of the rate. Charles Ait is currently attending the launch of the Club One, Ghana Club 100 Awards and is joining us live with some updates on the views of stakeholders of industry. 
Ahead of the review of the monetary policy rates come next week Monday, we've been engaging with several industry players as to whether or not they would want government to review the policy rates upwards or downwards. Right here at the Kempinski Hotel, we caught up with the chief executive officer of the GIPC ahead of the event launch of the 16th edition of the Ghana Club 100, who shared with us various concerns relating to the monetary policy rate. He says businesses are hopeful of a downward review. I believe that most businesses are looking for a cheaper cost of capital because um, capital is one of the difficulties of private business here. The private p businessman's lot is very hard. They go against very difficult and harsh um, conditions to grow their business. But um, access to capital and cost of capital is one of those areas where they are even more challenged. And uh, I know that it's on governments, it's one of government's top priorities to stabilize the economy such that interest rates can come down. So the cost of capital can come down and private sector can borrow and do better business than before. Now, chiefs in the Amansie West District of Ashanti region are calling for expedited action on government's one district, one factory policy as a way of consolidating the anti Galamse fight. While acknowledging the positive impact of the ban on illegal mining, the chiefs are disturbed by reports of increasing crime rates in the area due to the absence of alternative livelihood avenues. These concerns were expressed at the stakeholders' meeting at Mansong Kwanta to assess government's mission to end Galamse. Community leaders suggest incidents of robbery and other criminal activities have been on the rise since the government's ban took effect. Yeah. They attribute the trend to joblessness of the youth who are being forced out of the mining pit. Traditional authorities believe new opportunities would curb the crime rate. Here is my son Quanta and Nina Sehene. Nana a crisis from Pong. Ye Jai Kura Redi, Mr. Sanson, a binese. She say, in creative ye, O be in Yajma, Senka, O be pippers ye genu. Most of the youth are jobless, so they resort to social vices like armed robbery. She say, I'm not asset. I could not send in San Vienum a dozen. He said, this place is typical farming community, basically cocoa farming. We want government to set up cocoa processing factory as part of its one district, one factory policy to replace the abolished illegal mining to create jobs for the youth. District Chief Executive William Bidiakwasante indicated government commitment to creating jobs to replace illegal mining. Yes, um, for some time we we've realized that the ban on illegal mining or galamse was working properly in in, in, in in our place here. The whole of Masu, you could see that people were complying with the president's ban. But of late, uh, I have observed that it looks like people want to test the pause of authority find out whether um, they could go back and work. And I've had a series of complaints from people who want to report what they are seeing. And I realize that as a DC, I alone cannot uh, fight the Galamse minutes. And so I decided to invite the chiefs, the assembly members, and other stakeholders so that they will come on board and also um, help. Because it looks like a lot of the people think or they feel that it's the responsibility of the DC alone to fight the Galamse Minas. But Mansu is so huge that in a day, if even 50 people are doing Galamse, how many of them can I arrest? And I thought that when I bring the chiefs and assembly members in, they will be able to um, handle 
some of these things. For now, what we are doing is to be engaged in these stakeholder consultations. And we are, we are urging people to take opportunity with regards to the planting for food and jobs. And then the, uh, we, we have also been urging people to try and apply for work at the, uh, at the Asanko Mines. There's a mining here. And we've been urging them to also apply. And then we are encouraging more and more of the youth to go into agriculture. There are other aspects of agriculture that is going on. We are encouraging the people. But most of the people are saying they are waiting for the one district, one factory. And of course, I know uh, what government is putting in place. There are a few companies that want to come and invest here. This is live on the market list. Now, moving on, there are some rumors that some communities in the Ada area are saying that the ban on light lifting has been lifted by the Fisheries Commission. Now, this is said to be false and has been deliberately disseminated to mislead fishers. Charles Ait is currently with the regional director of the Fisheries Commission and brings us live some updates. Hello, Charles, can you hear me? Ciao. Hello, Emmanuel. So, as you've rightly stated, this. Hello, Emmanuel. As you could rightly hear me. So, this very situation still lingers on, and we're currently here at the Ange Hill Hotel at the East Legon to verify from the Greater Accra Regional Director of the Fisheries Commission bothering the issues related to the ban on illegal fishing and whether or not there's anything like a ban. Many thanks for your, for your time, sir, on Marketplace. First of all, help us clarify is there a ban or the law is just being affected. Um, the fisheries law 625 and uh, regulation uh, 1968, they are already in operation. Therefore, within the, the laws and the regulations, there is an illegality if one uses light in fishing. Therefore, uh, there is, I, I, I just don't know where that a uh, uh, word of ban comes from is is an illegality. But we did hear about the setting up of a specific task force to clamp down on the activity of light fishing across, uh, you know, uh, water bodies. It is not uh, actually a task force to clamp down on illegality. Uh, about a month ago, the Honourable Minister organised uh, stakeholders forum inviting all MMDAs along the coastal region and uh, other stakeholders to, for a, a, a meeting and at that meeting there was a declaration by all stakeholders that they would abide by the laws, uh, fisheries laws, including uh, light fishing. So after that it became very clear that there are other infringements on the part of uh, fisher folk. So the minister formed this task force with the main responsibility to see to the, um, the, the, the seaworthiness of uh, all vessels and uh, make sure that the sanitary conditions on these vessels are uh, good for fishing. Right. So n not just a cut in the next 30 seconds, help us understand the state of light fishing in Ghana today. Is it, has it improved or is it getting worse by the day? Yeah, uh, it's getting worse because we have overfished our resource. Therefore, fishermen think that the, the only way they can get something is to use uh, light fishing, which actually is a method of aggregation of uh, all sizes of fish. All right, so the ministry, therefore, as I could draw from your session, is putting in place measures to clamp down this activity. Yeah, the, 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 the ministry, uh, as well as the commission, has uh, put, on, uh, put up these uh, measures to make sure that we keep the uh, illegal use of fishing, especially light fishing. All right. 
Okay, thank you very much, uh, John Scott. He is the General Regional Director of the Fisheries Commission, shedding light All right, thank on you the very issue much, related Charles to like fishing. We shall be exploring this very situation further, Emmanuel. Thank you very much, Charles IT, for that update. Charles IT speaking with the Regional Director of the Fisheries Commission, John Scott, on the allegations or rumors that light fishing has been banned and the ban on light fishing has been lifted. This is not the marketplace. Let's take a breather here for an investment tip. Investment tips is brought to you by Daffing Finance, Deposits, Investments, Borrowings and Advisory. The Modified Life Cycle and Investing Early Work Life. In your early working years, you're likely to spend more than you earn. This may more likely lead to borrowing. When borrowing, remember not to use more than 45% of your monthly income to pay debts. Don't forget, the ideal situation should be 60% of your income could be on living expenses, food, shelter and clothing, 15% on debt repayments, 10% on charity, donations or religious activities, 10% into savings or investment portfolio, 3% on insurance needs if required by circumstances, and 2% on others. Investment Tips was brought to you by Dauphin Finance. Deposits, investments, borrowings, and advisory. You're welcome back. Now, it's a family business which has already spanned three generations. HP Bakery uh, has grown from just serving a neighborhood to the city of Accra. So, to Joy, the Joy Business Fund was curious to find out how the family which owns the bakery at Kotobabi here in Accra has managed to keep the business afloat over a period of 30 years. Here's a repeat of the Joy Business Van. Arguably, the Ghanaian breakfast is not complete without bread. Bread is probably just about the most common snack in the country, and the bakery business seems to be booming. One of the popular brands comes from this bakery we are taking you to. HP Bakery is managed by Adelaide Rind of Beniti. The business dates back to the 70s and was handed over by her father just this year. The family business was started by Adelaide's grandmother in a kitchen. Uh, she was a caterer, so when she didn't have any catering gigs, she would bake bread and she would sell it in front of the house. And the neighborhood uh, folks started patronizing the bread. And it was called home pride bread, actually. But uh, the neighborhood people nicknamed it HP bread for the H and the P in the home pride. So it became HP bread. Adley's grandmother, also called Adley, grew a following. What was a part time business now seemed viable. After almost two decades, Adley would move from baking in her kitchen to her garage. That was when she passed the business on to her only son, Edwin Carl Randolph. Edwin, an accountant who was living outside the country at the time, had the tough task of growing the business. I had to learn a lot more by myself. Okay. To get where I am now. Management, um, everything, nearly everything. And then studying the Ghanaian business uh, atmosphere, climate. Okay. Which is another thing altogether. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I did. But I had to go at it slowly. Mm -hmm. step by step. Well, step by step, Edwin grew the business. At a point, it was difficult to meet demand. That informed the decision to transform the business from manual production to acquiring automated equipment. This cost about 500,000 CDs, an investment that has paid off. And when he started with the investments in the business, I was very scared because I, I felt, wow, this, this is our lifeline. And if we are not able to make the production to pay this money back we're going to kill the business but it's, 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 it has been a journey it has been a journey it took a lot of time to pay it off but we are here today today hp bakery supplies thousands of outlets in the city of accra and is no longer in the garage 
Edwin is now retiring from the business after successfully managing it for 30 years. And when it was time to decide on who would take over from Edwin, the lot fell on Adelaide, one of five children. She faces the uphill task of building on the successes talked by her father. The chatted This is I apologize for the abrupt end of the repeat of the Joy Business Band and it's a wrap on this afternoon's edition, The Marketplace. My name is Imano Apuaji Jafi. Thank you very much for joining me. Have a nice day. Good afternoon.